Let's break down exactly how React 2 Shell actually works. It's a complex chain of events, but hopefully this diagram makes it a little bit easier to follow what we're actually going to be demonstrating here shortly. It all starts here with the malicious JSON payload. The attacker sends a specifically crafted JSON object to the server. Think of this as the Trojan horse. It looks like normal data, but inside are specific properties like the then, the status, and form data that are designed to manipulate the server's internal logic. We're essentially sending a blueprint for our own execution on the server. In step one, the lie. This is when the server receives that JSON. The React deserializer starts processing it. It sees the then property. In JavaScript, if an object has a then function, it's treated as a promise. React sees this and thinks, oh, I need to resolve this promise immediately. But we've actually tricked React into treating this passive data as active code. The switch. But we didn't provide us any function for dot then. Look at the input. We pointed it to chunk prototype dot then. This is an internal React function used for managing data streams. By forcing React to call this specific function on our fake object, we've successfully hijacked the server's execution flow. And now we're actually running inside the internal machinery of React. In step three, once inside that internal machinery or logic, the code checks the object state. Because we've included status resolved model in our payload, it acts more or less like a VIP pass. It's an ID badge or an employee badge that bypasses normal security checks and guides the execution flow directly into our sensitive function called initialize model chunk. This function was never meant to handle untrusted user input. And finally, in step four, remote code execution. Inside that initialize model chunk, there is code meant to read data. It looks something like this dot form data dot get that is taking the input from this JSON. But remember, in our input, we mapped dot get to the JavaScript function constructor. So instead of getting data, the server is actually executing a brand new function, passing in our malicious command string. And in JavaScript, it's effectively the same as the evaluate function or eval. The result is instant. The server complies and we have remote code execution. Next, I'm gonna show you how I've constructed a very simple mock-up of running a server and then passing it and we'll show you how this malicious JSON command works in a practical sense. Alrighty, so I have an exploit.py script shown and I want to walk through this code to explain what's going on. The server 
IP address is here. It's going to be running on port 3000. The command is actually what we're going to be doing. We're going to be adding a pond underscore success file into the temp directory of the server. The first thing that we're going to be doing is I have a git action ID and this is some very I guess would best way to say would be I need to actually fetch the targets home page and it escapes the HTML source code to find a basically an input field that starts with action ID because next Dot JS servers aren't like standard URLs like slash API slash login. They're identified by long random hash IDs. And so if we don't have that in our ID, the server will ignore our post request entirely. Now let's actually go into the send exploit function down here this is where all the heavy lifting is done this is where we're actually going to be sending the command the important part here is of course the uh, payson sorry payload underscore json which has uh, the command that we're actually going to be in and it's constructing this string manually the com key components that we actually have here are going to be the then dollar sign proto then, which is hijacking the flow and forcing React to treat this object as a promise that we talked about earlier using the internal chunk logic of these servers. The status revol excuse me, status resolved model that we see here is further tricking the logic into thinking that this chunk is already for processing. Next we have this git dollar sign one constructor which is replacing the data retrieval method with the JavaScript function constructor which is compiling our command string into the executable code this is where we're actually building the detonation device we're not sending valid data we're sending a JSON object that mimics a React structure to trick the server into running our code. Finally, the body parts is the delivery mechanism. This is constructing the HTTP body manually instead of using a library like requests. So in this, essentially it's a multi-part form data with two specific fields, field zero and field one. Field zero has our payload underscore JSON, but the string here is a reference. It tells the React deserializer field one is actually a reference to the object in field zero, payload underscore JSON forces the server to parse the field zero immediately as a chunk and then triggering the exploit chain. So again, this is the detonator because it's pointing back to field zero, forcing the server to load our malicious JSON immediately. Next here is just headers resembling it to make it look like a legitimate browser request and finally we have just some 
error handling that goes on but really the main pieces that are going on right here is this send exploit and then also the get action ID which is what we need in order to send that request in so that it's properly handled so let's actually see this in action all right we've moved back to my Ubuntu machine which is going to actually be running the server so let me go ahead and start the server and as we see it's on local port 3000 or it's listening on 3000 it's actually mapped internally to from 80 so when the request gets sent and whatever but we have the server up and running a vulnerable server and so then if we go ahead and get back to our Kali and if I run the exploit that we just had discussed I'll hit enter here we see that it scraped the action ID then it sent the malicious payload that we discussed I'm gonna go back now don't see anything here but I'm gonna go ahead and open and increase our window size our text size and I want to go ahead ll l we will put it into the temp directory of running it and pond success which it matches the time which we sent at just a minute ago this was created showing that we have remote code execution in the next video actually have a honeypot running so we're going to take a look at some of the stuff that actual threat actors or script kitties or whatever are going ahead and sending malicious and we're going to take a look at that in Wireshark I'm having it log TCP requests we have all logged activity so make sure you hit like and subscribe so that you get alerted when the honeypot video goes live thank you